guys agenda of this tutorial is bootloader so in this in this bootloader we are going to see about first reverse engineering from car that is ecu to ic so how the ic is fabricated then it's implemented into the ecu cars ecu so we'll just uh, look upon the reverse engineering process a very simple process then introduction on bootloader then introduction on uh, primary bootloader introduction on secondary bootloader introduction on the application that is firmware then what happens if secondary bootloader not present so brief explanation on primary and secondary bootloader okay see first we'll uh, look upon the reverse engineering from the car see this is our car bmw so in this bmw we have a number of ecus if it is a um, indian vehicle it must it might it may be the it's a high-end vehicle it might be the ecus or range of 70 to 90 and um, for uh, foreign countries like uh, uh, developed countries like us or uh, germany they might have the ecus of uh, around 110 uh, like that so in that ecu we are focusing on only one ecu so from the one uh, we are just taking out one ecu uh, in that ecu we are taking the chip this is the board uh, for the ecu so in this board again we are taking out the chip one chip see we are just uh, pointing to this chip so we are just taking out this chip out of the ecu so we just consider this is a ic uh, ec ecu which is implemented in the um, ecu so this chip have been programmed to be controlled or do some process or whatever it is so you just as of now you just assume this is a chip we are going to work on and uh, in this you just consider this is a raw chip okay so this chip i have just as a diagrammatic representation i have given the chip like this so once in, the, in if you come to the manufacturing of a uh, bootloader so this is what the now we came out of the reverse engineering process so we took the ec ecu chip that is chip uh, the, the raw chip in that raw chip we are just uh, implementing the flashing the bo primary bootloader so who will flash this primary bootloader you are going you are going for a shop and you are buying some chip uh, that is ic you don't want to uh, flash any primary bootloader it's already inbuilt that is that means the manufacturer itself have they have to it's their duty to uh, flash the primary bootloader so just just imagine what happens if no primary bootloader so if there is no boot no primary bootloader then the chip will not even work so it is like a dummy silica chip that's it there will be no nothing will work there will be no power supply uh, there will be no no you cannot able to flash anything so that means when when the manufacturer gives the chip to the vendor it must be flashed with the primary bootloader then this is the next step so from the raw chip uh, as we know primary bootloader have been flashed so these two uh, comes into the uh, into the category of the chip manufacturers so this is a secondary bootloader so this is end user say for example this is uh, me the end user is me or you once uh, we bought the chip once we bought the ecu you uh, in the ecu you are uh, taking out the chip so in the chip you are uh, flashing the secondary bootloader so once you flash the secondary bootloader then you are flashing the firmware or application so firmware is nothing but the binary image file or application file whatever it is so uh, this is what the process once you are getting the uh, prime uh, the raw chip uh, you are not you will not get raw chip you will get the chip which is flashed with primary bootloader once the primary bootloader have been flashed and given to you as a vendor then you will you have to flash the secondary bootloader then uh, uh, on the top of the secondary bootloader you have to flash the firmware or the application file so this is what the entire process or flow uh, in the in terms of reverse engineering from uh, the chip see this this end this final application chip will be put into the cars ecu so the number of cars ecu makes the car to uh, run as an end user then so before uh, going into the primary and secondary bootloader just understand what is bootloader so bootloader have many definitions in terms of uh, computer or a processor uh, but if you comes into the automotive so this you can consider as a good exam good uh, definition a bootloader is a type of program that loads and starts the process of a core processor core process is nothing but the ic what you are going to fetch into the car's ecu 
or any system or application or firmware so that means uh, once you once the ecu started to work the first the program start to execute is a bootloader so that is what the, the bootloader is simple like a program that's it so it will uh, execute first it will run first then bootloader enables loading an application within the browser memory see this is our key word so the bootloader enable a loading an application within the processor memory so in inside the processor memory an application can load okay so that is what the main uh, intention of the bootloader when a processor is started or booted so whenever the processor is started or boot or, um, or whenever the processor is started so it should be booted up by using the bootloader only then a bootloader is also called as boot manager or bootstrap loader can call by these names also this is this is the exact definitions of a uh, bootloader you have a number of uh, definition uh, with uh, respect with the pc because in your, if you switch on the pc or laptop it will uh, give you the sign like uh, bootloader is on uh, process or bootloader starting up the processor like then so this is in terms of the ecu cars ecu or any processor or any chip okay this is what bootloader then we go on to the primary bootloader what is primary bootloader so the primary bootloader is nothing but um, program same it's like it's like a program it's not unlike any other bootload it's also like a program this is like a programming bootloader it is simple program which is it is useful to booting up the board so whatever the board you are going to use the board you are used to booting up and activate other peripherals such as the iO ports UART port CAN ports or i2c ports etc so these peripherals need to be started up or activate by using the primary bootloader if see just imagine if there is no primary bootloader then these ports will be not will be inactive so once these port will be inactive then you don't you cannot able to do anything with the chip you can throw unless you cannot have any option to do with that so for that is a purpose the primary bootloader is a, a must see uh, just for example this is a uh, bootloader uh, this is a raw chip okay just consider this is a raw chip so once the primary bootloader have been flashed the, so the it will get all the um, supply the board will activate all the peripherals so it, it is ready for ready to accept any application file or any secondary bootloader that is what the main intention of the primary bootloader once the i i i, I um, icu uh, has sorry ecu have been uh, flashed with the um, particular ic the particular highs have been flashed with the primary bootloader then the primary bootloader will be waiting for secondary bootloader or the application it's uh, end user wish to flash anything so this is what about that's all about the primary bootloader and this uh, introduction on secondary bootloader see in secondary bootloader the secondary bootloader is to booting up the individual or application which is loaded into the board so that is what the main uh, application of the secondary bootloader so the second uh, the secondary bootloader for example see if the if the user is using some um, the i uh, some ecu that is ic which is flashed with the primary bootloader then after that you are uh, just flashing the secondary bootloader the secondary bootloader will do the uh, booting up the application as you know the primary bootloader activate the peripherals and uh, other uh, stuff in the same way secondary bootloader used to booting up the individual application which is loaded into the board then it can also be useful to switch one application to another application whenever the request fetched from the user end. see for example uh, the secondary bootloader is mainly useful for uh, switching the application from one application to another for example if you are using multiple application in the same ECU uh, see if you are working on the infotainment in the infotainment you have a two application one is audio application and another is a video application the if you want to switch the audio application to video application both are different applications so at that time uh, secondary bootloader comes into the picture to switching the application from one to another Uh, generally uh, one more advantage of the secondary bootloader is if there is no no secondary bootloader there is no other option to flash the binary file through debugger uh, as you know a, a number of debugger are present like jlink jlink or jtag like that so you don't have any option you have to flash through uh, jlink jtag like that but once you flash the secondary bootloader you can flash through can ethernet plain anything
so that is one main advantage you don't want to uh, see for your simple understanding i can say you if the if the, some ic have been uh, fetched into the ecu the ecu have been fetched into the car uh, you don't want to take the entire ecu out from the car to flash the flash the application so if there is any changes made in the application you can simply uh, use can or ethernet to flash the particular stuff uh, you don't want to go for the debugger or uh, like jailing jtag to flash so this can only happen if secondary bootloader present in the chip then um so this is how this is how the secondary bootloader works and uh, i guess you are uh, you got some knowledge on primary bootloader and secondary bootloader now mm, this is the frequently asked question i have faced like uh, what happens if there is no secondary bootloader present see here what i have given is raw chip in the raw chip we have flashed the primary bootloader uh, on the top of the primary bootloader without uh, using secondary bootloader you are flashing application so what will happen nothing will happen the application will work fine everything will uh, goes correct but the only only problem is once if you want to flash the application again or if you want to change any calibration values so the application won't uh, the, the application won't um, impact anything that is a <laughs> day this is a to stop so the main advantage is uh, if you not using the uh, firm uh, secondary bootloader uh, that is you are uh, making uh, the primary bootloader on top of the application or firmware then if, if you want to change anything uh, calibration values or anything then you have to take the ec out and you, ha you can uh, uh, you have to flash through the debugger so if you want to do so many changes then it is highly recommended to use secondary bootloader uh, so not only re not only recommended it is um, compulsory to use a secondary bootloader on the top of the primary bootloader then you can use application or firmware so you, you if you want any changes you can easily flash through uh, j you can easily flash through the can or uh, ethernet so if you are very new then uh, you might feel some difficult like uh, what is the difference between flashing through jlink or uh, can that is jlink is uh, a debugger and canlin is a communication protocol so when you compare to the uh, debugger communication protocol is very e easy to flash so that's all about the this is what the frequently asked question i have faced so so far so you can do but you you will face some difficulties uh, while using as a um, end product then um then and one more question what happens if only one application used in a chip see as i said uh, you can uh, have um, if you have multiple applications you can go for a secondary bootloader so what happens if only one um, application is using in the chip so is it uh, enough is it uh, sufficient to use only one bootloader that is primary bootloader uh, the question is no that is what a uh, previous uh, one minute i have given the explanation so it is this no you have to use some uh, secondary bootloader to make the uh, end product as a reliable okay if you are if you like this video please hit the like button if you want to know more about uh, ud know more about the bootloader uh, just you can you can leave a comment or you can hit a like so i can understand uh, then i can do more video on the bootloader because bootloader is like a big big part so this is a very uh, little introduction i have given so if you willing to learn more stuff from bootloader you can please leave a comment so this uh, channel brought you for mainly for the people who are because nowadays people who are uh, completing the graduation they are coming for automotive domain so you can uh, just share this channel to your uh, friends who are uh, doing uh, engineering and uh, who are refreshers uh, code jobs and who are experienced also you can uh, learn basic stuff from the scratch uh, if you're not subscribed please subscribe share to your friends to subscribe bye bye catch you in next video